Hello, Divination, and welcome. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to creatively feature popular products on Divi's landing page. This is the final result we're aiming to achieve. So without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let's get started. All right, so the first thing we're going to do here is to create a brand new page. So I'm going to come over here to pages and click on add new. I'm going to name our page. Now, in your case, you can name this whatever you want, but I'm just going to call mine main landing. I'm going to click here on use Divi Builder. So for this design, we're going to start everything from scratch. So I'm going to click on start building. Right. So over here, I'm just going to close this for now because I need to make some adjustments to my main section. So I'm going to click here on my section settings, go to design, and then I'm going to come all the way down here to spacing and add my padding. And this is going to be 8VW both to the top and the bottom. So I'm going to save this and then I'm going to click on this plus button to add my columns. So here I'm going to start with a single column. And before we add any modules in there, I just need to uh, go in and make some adjustments as well. So I'm just going to close this and go to my row settings. And here I'm going to click on design sizing and I want to activate use custom gutter width and set this to one. Now the gutter width is the space between the columns. So we want to make sure that this is set to one. Next, I'm going to set my width and here my width is going to be 85 VW. And I also need to set up my maximum width and this is going to be 100%. So once we're done here, I'm going to click on save. And then over here, we need to add our Woo image module to column one. So I'm going to click on this plus button and then I'm just going to search for Woo image. And here it is. I'm going to select it. So right now, as you can see, it's showing my default image here for a product that I created before. So what we need to do is to let's save this for now and save the page. And then we are going to go and create our product now. So I'm going to click here on dashboard and I'm just going to go all the way back to my dashboard here and set my product. So on the products here, I'm just click, I'm just going to click on add new. And for my product name, I'm just going to choose organic scrub. Right, there we go. Uh, it needs a product description. So let's go ahead and add that. I'm just going to use my lorem text over here. So I'm just going to copy a bunch of text and then I'm going to paste it here. And over here now I need to add my image. So I'm going to set my product image and my organic scrub is right. Let's go with this one here. I'm going to set my product image. So again, I'm going to set my price here. I'm just going to say $67 and I'm just going to add a short description as well. So pretty much that's all I need to add here. So I'm going to go ahead now and publish this. So when I go now to my main page that I'm designing, I can go in and select this organic scrub. So back over here now, it's going to refresh this. And now we have our product. Now let's move on to the design tab and make some uh, adjustments. I'm going to go back over here to my module settings on design, and then I'm going to go to border. So over here on the border, I'm going to set my rounded corners to 20 pixels. And then I'm going to go all the way down here to our box shadow. And I'm going to choose the first option. And then I'm also going to set my blur strength. So my box shadow blur strength here is going to be about 50. So let's go ahead and add it here because by default it's set to 18 and um, that's not enough. Okay. So now I've set it to 50. The next I'm going to go to my shadow color here and uh, I think this shadow color looks okay. So I'm going to leave that as it is. Now let's add our title to this column. So I'm going to save this and then I'm going to click on this plus button and I'm going to search for title and here it is. So the beauty of this is it's going to just choose my title here for my main product that is showing. Now let's go ahead now and customize this font. Okay. So I'm going to come over here to design title text and we are going to change this to let's choose a font called Prata. So I'm going to search for it here and here it is. So for my title size, I'm going to set this to three VW. Now, as you can see, this is way too close to our product here. So let's work on our margin. So I'm going to come over here to spacing and then I'm just going to add a margin of seven VW and a bottom margin of two VW. So I'm going to go ahead and add it here. And while we're here, let's add our padding 
I mean our left and right margin of 2VW as well. So by default here, it, it uh, defaults to pixels, but we want VW. There we go, so that's much better now. So the next step is to add our wood description. So I'm gonna save this, scroll the way down here, and let's add our wood description. So again, I'm just gonna search here so that I can find it easier. Choose my description. Now let's add our font. So I'm gonna come over here to design text. I'm gonna change this to monster ads. So I'm gonna search for it. And by the way, all these fonts are free to use. There we go. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that. And then I need to set my text size. So I'm gonna scroll over here and set this to 0.8 VW. Next, I'm gonna set my line height and my line height here is going to be 1.8 EM. Right, so, so far everything is looking all good. Now let's add our margins and give this some breathing space. So to do that, I'm gonna come all the way down here to spacing and I'm gonna set my margin all around to 2VW. So notice that I'm activating this chain so that my value is added to all the sides. Right, so I'm done here, I'm gonna save. Next, I'm gonna add the woo add to cart. So again, I'm just gonna search for add to cart. There we go, I select that. And we also need to customize this so that it matches with our design. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is we are going to move on to the design tab and let's start with our fields. So fields background color, I'm gonna set this to white. So I'm gonna come over here to recent cause I know I used white before. And then I'm going to add my field text color. Now, if you want to use the exact same colors as I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. All right, so let's move on to the fields font. So I'm gonna scroll all the way down here and uh, fields font, let's change this to monster ad. There we go. So the reason why we're doing that is because we just wanna make sure we have consistency throughout our design. Okay, so let's go to our fields border width. So that's, um, that's also very important. So let's go to our border here and uh, making sure this is set to zero. Now let's add our fields border color, paste it in here. And as I mentioned a moment ago, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. Now over here on the fields, I need to have, add a hover. So I'm gonna click on this arrow pointing up, click on the hover tab, and I'm going to change this to one pixel. So you can see now on the hover, that's going to show our border. So I'm just gonna switch back over here. Now the next step is to work on our button. So to do that, I'm just gonna click here on this brush tool and this is gonna take me straight to my button. Now to customize this button, I need to activate use custom styles for button. Right, so the very first thing I need to do is to set my button text size. So I'm gonna set this to one VW. And then I need to also set my button text color and I'm gonna click on this eyedropper tool and paste my color in here. And my button background color needs to be white. So I'm gonna click here and go to my recent colors and choose white. Next for my button border width, I just need to remove that and set this to zero. Now let's add our button border color and I'm gonna use that dark gray. Then moving on, I'm gonna set my button font and I'm gonna use the font I used before here on the title and it's the Prata font. Now let's head over here to our button padding. So on the padding here, we're just gonna add padding to the top and this is going to be 0.5 VW. So we're gonna do that to the, to the top and the bottom and uh, also to the left and the right. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that. So notice again, I'm using this chain to add the same values to both sides. All right, so the next step is to head over to spacing. So I'm gonna scroll all the way down here. And the reason why I'm coming over here is because I need to add a bottom margin of 7VW and a left and right of 2VW. So I'm gonna activate my chain. So now I'm gonna add a border. So I'm gonna come over here to our borders and select my bottom one here. And I'm gonna set this to one pixel. And I'm also going to add my border color here. I'm gonna paste it in here like that. So pretty much that's all I need to do here. I'm gonna save. And then the next step is to add our price module. So I'm gonna come over here, click on this plus button, 
and I'm going to choose or search for price. And here we go. We need the wood price. Go ahead and select that. And this is fine because it is uh, choosing our latest product. But if you need to specify, you just come over here and choose organic scrub and that will uh, choose the actual item. So here we have the price. But of course, we want to customize that price and make it look the same as our design that we have. OK, so let's head over here to our design tab and click on price text. So I'm going to change this to monster right. And the font weight here, we're going to set this to light. And for our color, I'm just going to paste my color in here. And for the price text size, I'm going to set it to 2VW. And then on my line height here, I'm going to set this to 1.8 EM. Now let's head over here to our margins. So I'm going to click on spacing. And on the margins here, I'm going to set a bottom margin of 5VW. And then I'm also going to set the left and right. And this is going to be 2VW. And notice I'm activating my chain one more time. So pretty much this is all the content that we need for our product. So what we need to do now is to go back over here to our row settings. So what we need to do is to clone this design twice. So I'm going to clone like that. And now we have three products. So once we've cloned this, I'm just going to save this. And then over here now, I'm going to change my column structure by clicking on this little icon. And the column structure that we need is this one right here. So I'm going to go ahead and select it. And notice that this has immediately changed that. So as you can see here, we have all the same products here. So what we need to do is to come all the way back over here. In fact, before we do that, let's just make sure we save so that uh, we don't lose all our settings. Right. So what I'm going to do now is to go back and I'm going to add more products. I'm just going to hit update and I'm going to go back over here to add new to add a new product. And this one here is going to be a gift basket. I'm going to add some description text in here. I'm going to add a price. And uh, over here, we're going to add a product image. So our gift basket here is going to be this one here. So I'm going to set it. And pretty much that's all we need to do and publish it. Now, we also need to add one more. And uh, this time, hit add new. And uh, let's just call this soap. Add our description text. And then over here, we're going to choose our product image. And we're going to go with this one here. Set product image, publish. OK, so now that we've added three more products, we're going to come back over here and we're just going to refresh because what's important now is to go in and change this dynamic content to match our products that we've just uh, added. So over here now, I'm going to go back in and uh, on the product, I'm going to click on this drop down and choose my gift basket. There we go. And then uh, I'm going to save that. And then on the soap, I'm going to change this as well. Click on this gear icon, choose my gift basket, save that. And then moving on, go in here. I'm going to change this to gift basket. I'm going to save that. And then finally on the price, I go in and match this with my gift basket. So you need to do the same with um, one of the products there, the soap. Because as you can see, we have two soaps. So just go in and change the details there. All right. So the next step now is to go to our Woo title for the second column. So I'm going to click here on this gear icon. So what we need to do is to go into design spacing. And uh, we are going to add a left and right margin and set this to 5VW. So I'm going to save that. Next, let's head over here to uh, add to cart. So I'm going to click here on this gear icon, design. And again, I'm going to go to spacing. And over here, we need to set this to 5VW as well. I'm going to save that. And we're going to do the same to the pricing. I'm going to click here on this gear icon, design, spacing. And again, set this to 5VW. And that's the beauty of adding this um, chain icon because it allows us to add the values to both sides. So I'm going to save that. So now that we have all our modules in place, let's go ahead and style our columns. So I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to start here with the very first uh, column. So to enter my column structure, I need to click on this gear icon. 
and I'm going to start with my first column and add my background color. And here we're going to set this to white. So I'm going to go to my recent colors, add white to my background. Next, I'm going to come over here to design border and I'm going to set 20 pixels here for my border. And this is going to be applied to all the sides. Next, I'm going to add a shadow to my um, first column here. So I'm going to choose my first option here for my column. And for my vertical position, I'm going to set this to 22. And my blur strength is going to be 150. And then for my color, I'm just going to come over here and paste my color within the brackets like that. Now, you know what? For this, uh, we're going to add a hover on the shadow color here. So I'm going to click on this uh, arrow that's pointing up, click on the hover tab. And then since this is going to have some transparency, I'm just going to play around with this slider here to bring my RGBA values and then paste my value between the brackets like that. So that's only going to happen on the hover state. So the next step now is to go to our filters and we are going to play around with the blur. So over here, we're going to set this to four pixels and you can see now that my item has been blurred, but on our tablets and phone, we don't want that blur. So I'm going to set this to zero and zero for the phone as well. So I only want this blurred on the desktops. So what we're going to do next is uh, we want that when you hover over it, it removes the blur. So I'm going to click again on this arrow and then on the hover, I'm going to set this to zero. And then I'm just going to go back over here. So every time someone hovers over here, this is going to show all the information. Next, I'm going to come over here to the advanced tab and then click on position because here we need to set our Z index to nine. And then while we're here, we need to set our hover Z index to 12. There we go. Now, while we're here, let's head over to our design and go to transform because what we need to do here is to go into transform translate. And next we need to break this chain here because we don't, uh, we don't want our values to be applied to the same side. So I'm going to start off by adding seven VW to the right side and two VW to the bottom. So this is just readjusting our positioning. So pretty much that's all we need to do here. I'm going to save and save one more time. So the next step is I need to apply the similar settings that I've applied over here to the left all the way over here to the right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy my item styles and paste them to the third column. And then I'm going to go into the third column here and I'm going to adjust my transform translate. So I'm going to come over here to design, transform, choose transform translate. And over here, instead of having two VW, I'm going to set it to minus two VW. And I also need to go in and adjust our Z index because this needs to be behind this image here. So let me just go back over here and let's start working on column two. So on column two, I'm going to go to design and we need to go to our box shadow. So the box shadow that we need here is the, uh, the first option. And uh, we're also going to go in and add our vertical position. So here on our vertical position, we're going to set this to 22 and then our blur strength to 150. Now for our shadow color, I'm going to click on the eyedropper tool and paste my values between the brackets. Now remember, I'm going to leave a link to the post in the show notes below with all these values that you may need if you want to follow this step by step. Okay, so now that I've added that, I'm going to go to advanced and then click on position. So for my Z index here, I'm going to set this to 11. So now you can see this has adjusted my uh, image and now it's above everything. All right. So I'm going to save here, save one more time. And before I forget, I need to add some rounded corners to this. So I'm going to go back into my second column go on design and then go to border. So this needs to be 20 or around. I want to save that save it one more time and then let's do a quick preview and take a look at our final design. So I'm going to exit the visual builder and this is our final design. 
So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we release new tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.